Continuing on page 183, Lewis writes, the records in fact show us a person, with a capital P, who enacts the part of a dying God, but whose thoughts and words remain quite outside the circle of religious ideas to which the dying God belongs. The very thing which the nature religions are all about seems to have really happened once, but it happened in a circle where no trace of nature religion was present. It is as if you met the sea serpent and found that it disbelieved in sea serpents. As if history recorded a man who had done all the things attributed to Sir Lancelot, but who had himself never apparently heard of chivalry. There is, however, one hypothesis which, if accepted, makes everything easy and coherent. The Christians are not claiming that simply God was incarnate in Jesus. They are claiming that the one true God is he whom the Jews worshipped as Yahweh, and that it is he who has descended. Now, the double character of Yahweh is this. On the one hand, he is the God of nature, her glad creator. It is he who sends rain into the furrows till the valley stands so thick with corn that they laugh and sing. The trees of the wood rejoice before him, and his voice causes the wild deer to bring forth their young. He is the god of wheat and wine and oil. In that respect, he is constantly doing all the things that nature gods do. He is Bacchus, Venus, Ceres, all rolled into one. There is no trace in Judaism of the idea found in some pessimistic and pantheistic religions that nature is some kind of illusion or disaster, that finite existence is in itself an evil, and that the cure lies in the relapse of all things into God. Compared with such anti-natural conceptions, Yahweh may, might almost be mistaken for a nature god. On the other hand, Yahweh is clearly not a nature god. He does not die and come to life each year as a true corn king should. He may give wine and fertility, but must not be worshipped with bacchanalian or aphrodisiac rites. He is, not, uh, he is not the soul of nature, nor of any part of nature. He inhabits eternity. He dwells in the high and holy place, heaven is his throne, not his vehicle. Earth is his foot, uh, footstool, not his vesture. One day he will dismantle both and make a new heaven and earth. He is not to be identified even with the divine spark in man. He is God and not man. His thoughts are not our thoughts. All our righteousness is filthy rags. His appearance to Ezekiel is attendant is attended with imagery that does not borrow from nature, but it a mystery too seldom noticed uh, from those machines, uh, but from those machines which men were to make centuries after Ezekiel's death. The prophet saw something suspiciously like a dynamo, the prophet Ezekiel. Yahweh is neither the soul of nature nor her enemy. She is neither his body nor a declension and falling away from him. She is his creature. He is not a nature god, but the god of nature, her inventor, maker, owner, and controller. To everyone who reads this book, the conception has been familiar from childhood. We therefore easily think that it is the most ordinary conception in the world. If people are going to believe in a god at all, we ask, what other kind would they believe in? But the answer of history is almost any other kind. We mistake our privileges for our instincts, just as one meets ladies who believe their own refined manners to be natural to them they don't remember being taught. Now if there is such a god, and if he descends to rise again, then we can understand why Christ is at once so like the corn king and so silent about him. He is like the corn king because the corn king is a portrait of him. The similarity is not in the least unreal or accidental, for the corn king is derived through human imagination from the facts of nature and the facts of nature from her creator. The death and rebirth pattern is in her because it was first in him. On the other hand, Elements of nature religion are strikingly absent from the teaching of Jesus and from the Judaic 
preparation which led up to it precisely because in them nature's original is manifesting itself. In them you have from the very outset got in behind nature religion and behind nature herself. Where the real God is present, the shadows of that God do not appear. That which the shadows resemble does. The Hebrews, uh, the Hebrews throughout their history were being constantly headed off from the worship of nature gods. Not because the nature gods were in all respects unlike the god of nature, but because at best they were merely like, and it was the destiny of that nation to be turned away from likenesses to the thing itself. Shalom. Out.